Hey guys, welcome. My name is Eden. This video today is to try and help anyone that's trying to install a hatchjack bed lift system in their van or camper van or RV and has no idea what they're doing like we did. What? I don't really know what I'm doing right now. I normally don't do these type of tutorials, but I was just so lost in the process of installing our happy jack and there was just no information out there. So I decided I would record our process and possibly try and help some of you guys out. As you may or may not already know, the installation instructions are just horrible with this thing. Loosen the set screws in the collar of the connecting shaft where the gold hex shaft protrudes. Draw out the hex extensions and remove the E-clip nearest the set screw end of the timing shaft. What? And there's literally no tutorials out there from the day of me making this tutorial. So hopefully this will help those of you who feel totally overwhelmed about how to go about doing this, just like I did. This tutorial is long, it's not pretty, it's not structured very well, but if you sit down and watch this for 15-20 minutes before you start your installation, I'm pretty sure it'll give you a good understanding of the general process of things, and you'll learn from a lot of mistakes that we made along the way. Disclaimer, we have no association with Happy Jack whatsoever. This is purely just to try and help other builders through our personal experience, so take everything that we're saying with a grain of salt. All right, let's get right into it. The most important thing before you install them is making sure that your walls that you're installing them on are completely 100% square. So what we did is we used levels and just tons of measuring from every corner, from the top, from the bottom, to make sure that the distances between these two walls are completely the same the whole way through, from top to bottom, top to bottom, and then also across, and that there's no angle to the walls. So pretty much just trying to make as perfect of a square as possible. You wanna have less than a quarter inch of, uh, of error in the measurements, and you should be fine, uh, but we're gonna see because we don't know. Uh, when you get your happy jack, make sure you do not take these cross beams off. It also helps you carry it in and out of the van. And also when you're putting it up, it'll help keep it square. So you only remove this after you're done installing the actual tracks on the wall that you're putting them on. One thing to note though about this cross beam, when I measured the distance between here and here, it's exactly 48 inches, which is what it's supposed to be. But then I looked at it and it looked a little crooked. So I measured the bottom of the legs. There's about a half, an, uh, about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch too small, which means that this actually isn't holding it at a perfect angle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna screw in these top beams loosely. Then we're gonna take this off, and then we're gonna make sure that the distance between the bottom two is also exactly 48 inches, and screw them in. Put some blocks just so that we can hold it up at the right height that it needs to be just to make it easier to hold it in place while we screw it in. We also wanna try and mount the Happy Jack as high as possible so that when it's in the utmost position, we'll have as much headroom as possible. So really trying to get this as high as you, as you can before hitting the ceiling, or some people even cut little slits in the ceiling so that those top little notches go up and into the ceiling itself. So what we did is we have our exact center line of the van and from here we're measuring exactly two feet to each side. So this line right here is exactly two feet from our center line and then we have the exact same thing on the other side. And if we line these up, then this track should be exactly centered to the center line of the van. So the next thing we wanna measure is to make sure that it's not angled in any way and that it's sitting flush. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna measure from the floor to one of these cross beams. Okay, so that is 70 and 3 fourths. And then on the other side, I want to make sure it's exactly the same, which it is 70 and 3 fourths. And what I actually did uh, is I made these stacks of wood exactly the same height on the bottoms so that I, first of all, don't have to hold it in place while I'm screwing it in, which is really tough. And also so I can get it really, really exact before I screw in. So this side was actually a little bit lower. It was about an eighth of an inch lower. So I just added another little eighth inch piece of wood down there. And now it's exactly flush and exactly straight. And now I can just screw it in without having to hold it in. Uh, also, when you put the screws in, you wanna make sure that you're using something that's not gonna interfere with the track as it moves up and down as well as not pinching any of the cables uh, that are on some of these uh, connection points. Micro switches and cables, you want to make sure that you don't pinch any of those with the, with the screws.
Just measuring one more time. Make sure. Oh, perfect. So you actually want to put screws in all of the big holes that they provide, including the two side-by-side -side ones up here and at the bottom to prevent uh, the pole itself from actually twisting. Once you have your tracks mounted, the next stage is to attach the mortar. The mortar can either go inwards like this or facing outwards. We're obviously gonna go inwards here because we don't have the space. So we're gonna make sure this is gonna line up with the one inside. If it's not lined up, you can just take a little wrench and turn this so that they're perfectly the same. And then it should just slide right in. Which it does just like that. And then we're gonna take these two provided screws and we're gonna screw it in right here. So the next part is to connect this connecting rod, this drive shaft, between one side to the other side, to the mortar side. Here the instructions got really confusing and we're talking about all sorts of things that had no idea what it's talking about, but um, pretty much what we need to do is connect one side to the hex shaft on one side, and then on the other side, you're actually gonna use this one that was provided and you're gonna put one side into the mortar and the other side into this drive shaft. I don't know which side is which, or which way it goes, but we're just gonna try one way and see how it works. And it's gonna end up being like that and then inside the mortar. So the first problem that we had is that uh, this drive shaft was too long and didn't fit in here. So what we did is this comes apart and we just shortened this side by about four inches. And now when I put it back together, it fits. So once it fits inside and I put both sides into the drive shafts, I'll just put some self-tapping screws that are included in the kit into here and that's just gonna lock the drive shaft in place. And before you put this drive shaft in, you wanna make sure that these plates are at the same height. So I just measured the bottom of each one of these plates. They were all at the exact same height. It should be from factory because that's what the, those cross beams screw into. But you just wanna make sure that they're at the same height before you put this in. So it's saying um, that these trolleys should be at the exact same height but that the side on the non-mortar side, so where there isn't a mortar, should potentially be half an inch higher. So we're gonna do that before we lock in this, uh, this drive shaft. Okay, so this side of the trolley is half an inch higher than the mortar side. These are both securely pushed into the hex shafts on each side. And now I'm gonna screw in these self-tapping screws that came with the kit so that this locks into place. And then now when this drive shaft turns, it'll actually turn the chains on both sides. So once you have your rails back, uh, already installed and you've installed your drive shaft, uh, I think the next logical step is to test the mortar before you start building the entire frame. Because once you start building the frame and then you plug it, do all the wiring, and then you realize something's wrong, it becomes a lot more complicated to fix it. So. I think this is a good time to do a quick test to make sure that everything works before we move on. What we did here actually is uh, wire everything up. It's actually not that complicated. It has a wiring diagram that you get with it and everything's kind of just plug and play. This pigtail that you get with the kit is what plugs into your power source. So that just plugs in like that right there. And then the thing that says chassis ground, the white with the black wire, that connects to your negative cable and a uh, uh, positive 12 dc connects to your positive and then to the other side of this cable you're connecting it to your positive and negative terminal of your battery the rest is kind of just plug and play you have the lower limit switch which comes out of the top the upper limit switch that also comes out of the top and then the brake and the mortar that also come out of right here and the last thing is your switch which is a communications cable that comes also included. You plug one side in here and the other side plugs in right here at the bottom of your switch. One important thing to note though is that if you test it like this, it won't work. You actually have to connect a ground wire to the switch right here. They don't supply this. You need to make your own ground wire. And that ground wire you have to uh, connect to the same negative terminal of the battery that you're testing. Only that way it's gonna work. 
In order to test it, we actually just used a 12 volt uh, power tool battery and just literally just touched it against the, uh, the positive and negative terminals. So I've got my positive in the positive terminal, negative in the negative terminal. And this is that ground uh, wire for the switch. I'm gonna touch that also against the negative. And once I do that, it should work. Okay, so we finished testing it, um, the full range of motion up and down. There wasn't any weird noises, everything worked smoothly. It hit the lower and the upper switches and stopped. Uh, so I feel confident that everything's working okay. Now I can disconnect this and we can start building the actual frame of the bed itself. One of the weird things about this Happy Jack is that it doesn't actually come with a bed frame. You have to build your own bed frame. So all you're actually getting is these end plates that come on each side, one on this side, one on the other side and then you need to build the actual frame inside of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount one of these on each side, and then we're gonna put two aluminum channels on each side, thick ones, and then cross beams going across. There's a few ways you can mount this end plate to the Happy Joy track itself. The first way, which is what the way the, the factory recommends, is to place this spacer inside and then use this uh, plate that they provided. So you'd actually use like that and you stick it in and it would sit just like that and then you would actually mount this plate right on top of it using a pin that drops in between here and locks this in place now the plus side of that is that it gives it a lot of wiggle room so the bed frame actually has a little bit of a uh, air of movement and then that way uh, the, if the frame is not perfectly square it has some some room for air the downside to this is that, one, I think it'll make a lot of noise with the pin in there. While you're driving and stuff, it's a little bit janky and it'll move around. And secondly, you're losing a lot of space here on the bed. So you're gonna lose a minimum of this amount up to that amount uh, on each side, making your bed shorter. Another way to mount this that I've seen other people do in their vans is to actually flip this piece around and then using the spacer, you're gonna mount it directly onto the track itself, like that. Now the plus side of this is that you're gaining that extra inch and a half, two inches on each side, so your bed doesn't get shorter. Uh, and there won't be any as much moving parts, there's no pin, so it won't make as much noise. The downside is that your track has to be perfectly, perfectly square, or else this won't work, it'll just get jammed because there's no room for air. It's just literally locked into the tracks. So we're gonna try it this way, and we're gonna see if it works. If not, we'll use the, the pin method. So what I just realized is that these spacer plates, the holes on them are not equally spaced. So one side has more room than the other. Now, I don't know what the significance is and what way is better to put it because it doesn't say anything in the manual but as long as you're doing the same on all sides then it shouldn't matter so i actually put it backwards so now i'm gonna flip it around so it's the same on all sides and hopefully that'll work all right so we made our first big mistake of the install i was testing out the uh the mortar after i installed these cross beams i was looking in this direction but what I didn't test is uh, the clearance of this crossbar, and I ended up just digging straight into our wall. Um, so yeah, that really sucked. Uh, lesson learned, check the clearance that you have, cut the bar before you install it. All right, we're back. We took a little break for a while. I got a lot of progress done with the van and other things, and now we're back to the happy jack. So once you have your happy jack tracks mounted, uh, the next thing is to check the tension of the chains. Okay, so there's three chains in each one of these tracks. There's two on the sides, the vertical ones, and then there's one on the, on the top, the horizontal one. The vertical ones have a tension adjustment. So there's a nut at the bottom of each one of these tracks on each side, and you can uh, turn the bolt and that will in, in turn make the tension of the chain stronger or looser, whatever you need. The top one does not have a tension adjustment, and that was actually a big problem for us because this one was really, really loose for us. It was actually hitting on the bottom of the metal of this track. Uh, I was in talks with Happy Jack for quite a while. It wasn't actually very helpful. They kept sending me new chains, thinking that there was a one too many chain links. 
Um, but no matter what we did, it kind of stayed loose, which kind of sucks. But what we ended up doing is putting in a little piece of foam here in the back that the chain will sit on. Uh, that was what Happy Jack recommended we do so that it doesn't bang against the metal as we're driving. Before you check the tension of the chain, you have to make sure that these tracks are fully screwed in from all the holes that they provide. So all the big holes along the vertical posts, as well as the two on the top and the two on the bottom, those are actually gonna um, stretch out the track a little bit more. So make sure that you have all your screws put in before you do any adjustments to the tension of the chain. All right, so you have to build your own bed frame and there's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm gonna explain to you the way we did it, but there's obviously lots of different options. The Happy Jack comes with these two posts. What you have to do is complete actually the bed frame. So what we did is we got two more aluminum struts that'll go down lengthwise of the bed. These are quarter inch aluminum struts, quarter inch thickness that is. You don't want to go with anything uh, thin or light or any of the Home Depot stuff because it's just not strong enough and you're gonna have a lot of weight on these beds. So we went with quarter inch aluminum that we ordered from an aluminum supply store and it's just a right angle and it goes to the length of our bed. So we, want, we only ordered it once we knew exactly what the length was going to be. And we actually ordered a little bit more and then cut it exactly to size. So this is how ours looks right now. Like we said, we ended up doing the mounting brackets differently from how the factory recommends doing it this way but we did use the, um, the pins that were given to us from the, the kit to mount our aluminum struts. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna lay aluminum bars across that are gonna be the, the uh, support struts across. So these are our aluminum bars. We ended up going with one and a half inch by three inch bars. And we only did this because we wanted ours to look like wooden beams, but you can definitely get away with doing much um, smaller beams and doing more of them. These are just gonna be exposed because we're gonna be putting our, our wooden bed frame above this. And these bars are gonna be exposed from below. Um, another way that most people do it is to first put on their bottom piece of wood. Then they put a lot of thin bars of aluminum. And then on top of that, they put their mattress or their, you know, whatever it may be. These are actually gonna sit across like this. And that's it. And this is actually our bed frame. And then on top of this, we're actually just gonna put our bed platform, which is just half inch Baltic birch wood, plywood. We just have to bolt everything down and that's going to be our bed frame. One of the things you do need to consider with your when building your bed frame is ventilating uh, the mattress itself. So some in some way, you need to make airflow be able to come in from underneath the mattress and go up through the mattress and take the moisture up so that you don't get that uh, humid, soggy mattress syndrome. <laughs> Whatever it's called, I don't know. One more thing about this aluminum setup. If you do end up going with aluminum, some people obviously don't like the look of aluminum. And if you want to paint it, it's really, really tough. Uh, there is the option of getting it powder coated or something like that, but that's going to be really expensive. We just ended up painting our edges and the rest of our aluminum we actually covered with wood veneer. Um, and that's to give kind of the illusion that this is all made of wood, even though it's not. And that was our little hack to try and make it uh, uh, look more natural and not look like aluminum. So we also recessed some of the lighting into the bed frame itself all connected into one single wire, which was then connected to our light switch. All right, guys, there you have it. This is what our final Happy Jack bed looks like. It was a really long and annoying process, but we're super happy in the end with how it looks and how it functions, and it just frees up so much space in the living area of the van. If you guys want to see more of this van build, or if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out or comment here. Go ahead and subscribe or follow us on Instagram or TikTok. Thanks a lot and good luck with your build.